Um, good morning from me as well. It's a great pleasure to be here and to speak again at the summit. Uh, my name is Benjamin Sliver from the TU Dortmund University. And um, yeah, Michael already introduced the topic, so I'm going through the outline. Um, I'm going to motivate my topic with the um, convergence of mobility and communication. Then I'm going to present the state of the art approach, which is, which is inter process based coupling. Then I'm going to propose our simulator, and uh, then we'll show yeah, a proof of concept evaluation with uh, Zemo LTE and our mobility handling. So here's a short <coughs> video sequence. Some of you might already know it, if you're from the vehicular sector. And uh, it's showing the vision of fully autonomous traffic control. And as you can imagine, for realizing this, we need communication and we need coordination. So communication is a key enabler for those kind of systems in an ITS context. And um, what we see and what we will see in the future is also um, a more interactive mobility and communication. So things like mobility aware cellular handover and resource reservation. Um, mobility aware routing. So in the multi hop managed context, that's actually what I talked about last year. Um, context aware interface selection, if you have Wi-Fi and LTE and uh, for example LoRa, then you choose the, the best communication technology depending on your mobility. And as well, this is a 5G topic, a predictive alignment of pencil beams that you really spot a target and follow it and align the beams to it. So how um, for this we need the combina uh, combined simulation of mobility and communication. And how is this done at the moment? So we have a network simulator. In our case, this is Omnet, which has some basic modules for the event handling. There's the protocol stack for the communication technologies, and there's the mobility part. And then we have a traffic simulator, which also takes care about event handling itself, and uh, here cares about mobility in more details. And then we want to combine them. Combining is done via interfaces. And um, yeah, you need interfaces on both sides. And those interfaces are then synchronized. We exchange control information and state updates. And that's why we need to synchronize the event handling mechanisms so that the time reference is always the same. And this is done by a coupling framework, which is usually using a coupling protocol, which is in most cases based on TCP. And uh, here, this is um, the critical point for us because it has some disadvantages. So in many um, approaches, this coupling framework is not isolating mobility and communication. Um, it's rather providing a specific implementation, for example, for 11P, and then um, the coupling is provided as a side feature. So this is somehow a slight violation of the modular paradigm. Um, and that makes it hard to port it to other communication technologies, such as LTE, manage uh, routing, and uh, Zigbee approaches. And um, interestingly, um, Antonio is going to present um, in his talk um, an approach for, for coupling Zemo ATE with Wayne's in a more um, yeah, native way. We think it should be a, a bit the other way around, um, that the, the application framework should just say, OK, I want to use this type of mobility, and that's it, and doesn't know about the implementation. So, um, inherent in the system is that if we want to interact with mobility and communication, we have to use this protocol. And we, if we want to use information which is not part of the pro protocol, we need to extend it. So this is effort. Additionally, if we run the, those simulations, and especially massive simulations consisting of multiple servers, then we need this setup on every server. So this is also high effort. So here is the need for an alternative um, in an integrative way. So um, let's take a look at SUMO. SUMO is Simulation of Urban Mobility, and it's the standard um, de facto uh, approach for simulating vehicular traffic. And it's really complex. It's rather a package of different uh, tools than a standalone simulator. You have tools for visualization, computation of routes, um, loading map data and stuff like that. So it's really a, a tool suite rather than. And due to this complexity, I found a really great quote, which is about the import of uh, OpenStreetMap map data into the simulator. And it says, congratulations, when you performed all the steps so far, you have a map suitable for traffic simulation with Zoom. 
For me, this is not what I want. I want to download a map, plug it in and say, okay, this is my street ne network, use this network. And I don't want to use multiple filtering uh, scripts and stuff like that. So this is a critical point for us from a communication perspective. Um, it also has a wide range of different mobility models. And this makes it for the communication guides quite hard to dig into it because you need to take a look, a deep look at the mobility model. What th do the parameters mean? How are they different to other models? Yeah, and additionally, there's the external um, TCP-based control possible. And that's what I mentioned with the uh, communication uh, control coupling protocol. And another critical point for us is the static approach of Sumo. So it's rather designed for traffic evaluations and then you have a file where routes are set in a static way and then they are loaded at runtime. Um, you would imagine this is going to save computation time, but as I'm going to show later, it's not. Okay, you can use dynamic routing with the Trace AI protocol, but this is quite complex. Um, basically, you need to exchange the, the whole map information to the other process, and yeah, you need to have an image of what's running on the simulator, uh, vehicular simulator side and the communication simulator side, and yeah. So here, we also need an alternative for uh, an easier way of simulating the mobility, but from a communications perspective, as we are not traffic engineers. So and that's our proposal. It's called lightweight ICT-centric mobility simulation, in short, LIMO-SIM. And um, it's based on Omnet. So we use Omnet for the event handling mechanisms. Then we rely on INET and INET Manet. And um, here we plug in the kernel of our mobility simulation directly into the, the source code of Omnet and uh, INET. So this is what it looks like in uh, the project. And um, what do we gain from it? We gain a coupling approach which is based on a shared code base. This means our communication part can access every kind of information from the mobili mobility part. May it be acceleration, speed, the whole map topology, everything. And another great point here is that we gain independence from the actual uh, communication to uh, technology. For our simulation we run with Simo LTE. We took a, an example file of Simo LTE and just said, okay, mo mobility type is <coughs> our mobility type. And basically that's it. You can make some additional configurations, but yeah. And uh, our second focus is the lightweight approach. We don't provide a wide range of different mobility models because we think that's not needed for our use case. We rely on chosen models, which are well known and uh, analytical uh, evaluated. Um, we have native support for SM street map uh, data. That means you can really download a map, plug it in, and then run it. And all our decision processes are dynamic. We don't make use of static approaches. Additionally, um, we have um, another module which is used for visualization, which is, which is based on a QT. And then we can run simulations in a standalone mode without Omnet for if we just want to take a look at uh, traffic simulations and have a visual um, thing to, to take a look at it. But that's not part of, um, of this presentation. Here we are foco focusing on OMAD. And um, OK, how is this done in, in details? Um, we have a hierarchical uh, mobility model, and um, it's encapsulated in the uh, LimoSim car NED in uh, OMNET, INET. And the top layer is um, provided by the destination determination model, which is uh, yeah, this. There's a famous mod module, uh, the Hogendorn model, um, and this is the top layer of this model, it's strategic mobility. Basically, it's the reason why are we mo moving. So you go to work, you go to grocery and stuff like that. So this is the destination determination. And uh, you can access all these parameters directly from Omnet and say, okay, my destination is node X, Y, Z. When we have a destination, we need to find a path to it. And then we have a path planning, which is routing, basically Dijkstra, easy stuff. And then um, when we have this route, we move forward on the lane. Um, yeah, here we used the uh, OSM street map um, data format for representing our map. And uh, finally, we have to take care of other traffic participants, such as cars and traffic signals. And uh, here we rely on, on the intelligent driver model, which is a following model, which also, also provides an interface uh, to INET for setting the parameters. And what we get as a result is acceleration, and acceleration is then used um, 
to update the speed, and the speed is used to update the position. So um, let's take a short look at the IDM model, intelligent driver model. The goal is to determ determine uh, the acceleration with respect to other traffic participants. So here we have the current velocity and uh, the distance to the leader vehicle. And then there is this analytical model, which looks quite complex. It actually comes from <coughs> physicists. And um, but it, it is quite easy because you see we have a free flow term. It's just saying, okay, um, if we're not moving with the desired <coughs> speed, which is in most cases provided by the, the speed limit, then uh, we accelerate. And um, if there's another car present, we need to adjust the distance according to the desired distance. And the desired distance is uh, calculated with the second equation and consists of the safety distance and an intelligent braking strategy, um, yeah, which is somehow mirroring comfortable braking as you would brake in normal traffic. Um, we also use this model uh, for modeling the approaching behavior for traffic signals, which is not the standard way of using it, but as I'm going to show later, it works. <laughs> um, okay. Um, a short look at uh, the map data representation. As I already said, we're using OSM. And um, OSM data consists of nodes. Nodes are ba the basic elements uh, which um, assign an identifier to a position, and you can also have optional parameters. Um, and then ways describes set of sets of nodes. And um, in the context of streets, those ways uh, describe segments of streets with the same properties, so the same number of names, uh, lanes, the same number, uh, same speed limit, and stuff like that. So, and if you see here, uh, we have two lanes and they, they have a common node, which is then one, then um, they intersect. And uh, what we here do is we generate automatic intersections and then we connect those lanes and then the cars moving on, on those lanes uh, are able to use um, the <coughs> connection lanes for their traffic behavior with respect to the traffic rules. Okay, as I already said, we have the standalone mode, which is running without OMNET. Um, as you can imagine, this leads to a slight problem because our objects, Limousine objects, are not allowed to be aware of the OMNET environment. And um, this means we cannot derive them from C module or C simple, mo simple model. And then we have to question how can we make use of event based uh, behavior. And um, for this, um, we use a virtual event queue. So. Um, for Limusim, we have a dedicated uh, event scheduler if we use the standalone mode, which is then replaced here. And um, this is the event queue which is used uh, by the uh, Limusim objects. And if we were using it with Omnet, then we replace the event scheduler. We use the same event queue and integrate an event mapping. So basically, our events um, are scheduled. Then this is plugged in into the event handling uh, mechanism of Omnet. And on the other hand, if they shall be handled, then uh, we use the same method of to retrieve the actual e uh, originator event and then the origina uh, <laughs> originator event in within Limousim is handling the event. So this means uh, this is a transparent uh, mechanism <coughs> of event handling. And this has a great advantage. It means also that we, have we can simulate traffic participants such as interference traffic, which do not communicate without requiring Omnet modules for them. So we can say, okay, we have thou thousand uh, cars as interference traffic, but we just simulate one um, ca communicating car in Omnet. So how does um, setup look like? On the right-hand side, uh, we took the um, example file for the handover uh, example of Simo LTE. And um, basically, you just have to do this, and you, you would be fine on the right, uh, on the right hand side. It's so on the car mobility and the map. And on the left hand side, you see that we have uh, XML representation of the OSM map file. Um, on the first time this, this map file is loaded, we are generating an optimized file, um, which the ending uh, dot limo. And as you see here, it's using Cartesian coordinates. So we do this uh, on the first loading, we do this coordinate transformations and we replace uh, or remove all un unnecessary data here to reduce the file um, size. Um, 
And this is also uh, done in a transparent way. So the user um, just references the original file, and if there is uh, an optimized file present, then it's going to be loaded. Um, okay, for our evaluations here, um, we used the, um, the TRIP strategic module, which means we have a set of nodes, waypoints, for example, and then our car is approaching them sequentially, um, which means it's calculating the best route towards the next destination every in every update. And optionally, you can also determine the initial position. If this is not determined, then it will be set randomly. Um, so, uh, here we use the, <coughs> the IDs from the uh, XML rep representation, but you can also obtain these IDs from the uh, um, UI. Okay, and now I start with our um, evaluation. And this is the campus area of Dortmund. Uh, where I am located, and uh, we simulated one user interface car, uh, sorry, uh, user equipment car, so an LTE receiver, and uh, three base stations. Those base station locations are actually uh, telecom um, locations, and uh, then we um, tracked the signal strength. And uh, additionally, here uh, we have 100 cars as interference cars and they were modeled with an additional uh, speed behavior factor. This is the tendency of, of a car, of, or m more of a driver, to drive uh, with a higher speed or lower speed than allowed. <laughs> okay, and here the, you see the trace norm to the travel distance uh, for velocity acceleration and the uh, received signal strength indicator. Um, what we see here is that we have typical inner city characteristics for velocity and acceleration, which means uh, a lot of braking, a lot of accelerating, um, which is natural as you're interacting with our tra the traffic participants and there are also traffic signals present in the scenario. Um, <coughs> for LTE here, which is our main focus, we see that we get a varying uh, signal strength basically with respect to the distance um, to the base station and we have multiple handovers um, during runtime. And if we take a now a closer look at the locations of these the handovers, we see <coughs> here um, that we are in an area where probably um, we have one handover which is not really raising the signal strength and uh, it should <coughs> be avoided. And this is the motivation uh, for, our, for future works. So, okay. For because uh, that's an argument for using the mobility information. We already know the path where we are moving to avoid this handover, because handovers are cost intensive and uh, more, in many cases, lead to connection loss. Um, here's an evaluation uh, for the intelligent driver model for approaching a traffic signal. So on the x-axis you see the time and on the y-axis you see the location. And uh, what you see here are the trajectories of the vehicles. And uh, you can clearly see the, what I said, in, uh, the driver behavior factor. Um, we have slower cars and um, faster cars. And here's a slower car, the red one, which is lowering the speed for all of its followers. So this is the, the driver behavior factor. Um, and afterwards, uh, we have a stopping phase here. And then the vehicles are accelerating and then their tendency to drive slower or faster is restored afterwards. And we see here that IDM is suitable for simulating um, intersection approaching. Yeah. Um, we did another example application for using mobility information to optimize the communication processes here. And this is a trace of the SNR um, for the same setup. And um, we consider a scenario where we have a car which is acting as a mobile sender, as sensor and is uh, transmitting sensor data every 50 seconds. And um, if you do this usually in a periodic approach, you see um, that we mainly uh, send data where the channel quality is quite bad. So we thought, okay, it would be good, maybe in terms of avoidance of retransmissions um, and, and failures to leverage the connectivity information um, we have uh, to identify connectivity hotspots and avoid those kinds of transmissions. And um, it might be, sense, uh, might be a good approach to transmit data early if the channel quality is going to decrease and transmit data <coughs> late if we know we are, right now, the, is the best uh, 
spot and the channel quality is going to decrease. So what we here applied is a crowd sensing approach, which, which means we have 100 cars and they are all sensing um, the channel quality. We use this to update a global map, uh, basically position to channel quality. And then this is um, in the next following um, simulation run uh, used as a priori information. Uh, of course, there's some time variance in this. And um, yeah, what we then do is we choose um, our transmission time in the interval in between of the um, delta t. And what we can see here is that we increased the good put by uh, 25% and reduced actually the transmission duration by 50%, uh, 40%, sorry. And um, okay, you can say, okay, good put is, is great if we get more data speed, um, but what do I care about duration? Uh, well, maybe you don't care about duration, but um, this is quite um, important if you're interacting in a cell and share resources with other participants. So you basically free the resources early and others can use them. So we get a better system level performance. And finally, when uh, at first when we, we started with this work and uh, we said we are building a novel uh, mobility simulator, the f answers uh, and questions I already got were um, about the performance. And then we thought, okay, we model uh, the same scenario with different um, simulators and take a look at the performance and uh, later found out that this is quite complicated to provide the same setup. Instead, we said, okay, um, what's the actual impact of mobility on the communication simulation in total? And we can see here for pure mobility, it looks like um, constant, but it's actually um, linear here on the time scale. Um, so it's almost a uh, factor of 1,000. And uh, we had another uh, scenario with, with LTE. Uh, this is actually the handover example. And uh, you can see that um, here, the communication is 150 <laughs> times more computation uh, intense than mobility. And as a third scenario, we used uh, Wi-Fi to transmit sensor data. And here is a really shocking result. We um, received a factor of 600. So this means um, the communication simulation is much more computation intense than the mobility simulation. And on the other hand, this means the mobility is, can be even considered negligible in most kinds of ITS scenarios. And um, this leads to the conclusion that um, pre-computing of routes is um, unnecessary. And this is, this is good news for us because we do want to do everything uh, smart and intelligent and dynamic. Okay, and that's um, the conclusion for my work. So I presented our uh, novel simulator and uh, it has two focus fields. The first one is the seamless integration um, using a shared code base. And um, this provides a high layer of interaction between mobility and communication. And this means um, we can now build applications where communication uses mobility information to optimize processes. And <coughs> on the other way around, uh, I have not talked about uh, communication aware mobility, but this is um, really a hot topic in the field of UAB networks where you optimize your, your path. You really are moving with respect to the availability of communication. And um, the other focus field is dynamic processes. So everything is determined dynamically. What we want to do with this is basically later um, large scale um, traffic control scenarios. Um, we are going to extend the simulator. I already said it's based on, on Qt. Um, we use QML for the visualization. We are now moving to OpenGL because if you have really big uh, scenarios, this is going to uh, provide um, really decent speed up. And I'd say we are at 80% done with this. Um, we want to enhance uh, the coupling uh, with veins and artery. So this means what we could imagine is that our um, frameworks can be used as an alternative to Sumo. Um, currently, they are really tightly coupled. And um, then we want to concentrate a bit on flow-based traffic modules because um, we, are, we have behavior-based models, uh, we have random-based models, and in between there are flow-based models. Uh, and yeah, this is qu missing at the moment. And as we're already interacting with OSM data, next logical step is to use um, the um, availability of building information to generate um, INET obstacles and use them for the communication simulation. Further applications, um, 
What's really interesting, um, last year Asanya talked about the SWIM module and uh, we think about um, integrating behavior-based models here. So basically the, the TRIP module uh, model I mentioned can easily apply to the SWIM model as well. And for our, us as a communication networks institute, um, we have another focus which is mobile robotic networks and uh, those are also some kind <laughs> of cars and um, we want to use the simulator, extend the simulator for being used in indoor scenarios for uh, wireless warehouses where we have um, mobile robots which communicate over Zigbee and uh, yeah, behave like cars and follow routes. Yeah, and that's it. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Benjamin. It's time for questions. Um, let me start right over here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first of all, thank you, Benjamin, for this presentation. I, of course, thinks this is, a, as I already told you, it's a very hot topic uh, right now. And I have two questions for this. Uh, I are you, I imagine you are dealing with a kind of uh, uh, restricted space uh, map uh, where cars are moving, uh, right? So you have a, a constrained space uh, and cars are moving within the space or you are actually creating cars that are entering the... We can do both. Yeah. Pardon? We can do both. We can do both. Yes. So you are also, your, your simulator is also, your uh, framework is also, can also create, instantiate modules uh, dynamically. It's actually doing this in, in any case. So even if we are... Uh, using the, the static approach and say, okay, we will have 100 cars, they are created dynamically, yeah. Okay, so you, mm, just to be a little bit more clear, uh, you are, uh, because you said uh, you are both simulating cars uh, which have a corresponding entity in, in Omnet uh, and cars which are just... No, this is optional, so you don't need this, but you can do this. Okay, so you are, you can... It's At the end of the day, you can create all yeah. that modules dynamically. For, for us, it does not, m does not make sense to simulate any instance of a car in Omnet if it's not communicating and if it's just um, uh, an obstacle for other cars, then we don't need an Omnet uh, object for it. Okay, so, uh, but I imagine that you, uh, this summit you, was, you were not doing uh, in the example with the, the Endover example with SimulT, you were not creating dynamically modules? Well, I do, but uh, for as interference uh, traffic, yes. For interference traffic only, yes. okay. Okay, thanks. And the second one is a kind of a bit provocative question because uh, the actual name of your framework is uh, starts with lightweight. But Pardon? Yeah. Starts with lightweight, so yes. it's lightweight simulator. But you actually demonstrated that it's not that important uh, from a communication perspective to have uh, such a lightweight uh, uh, simulator. So. Why so? Why do you need to have a very lightweight traffic simulator? For, if for, that's for us, not it's um, not about really the implementation, it's rather about the setup. So this means we don't have two processes, we have one process, and this is the lightweight focus here. And then we, we focus on few models <coughs> rather than ha having 50 models and everyone needs to dig into the details. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. So, um, at the moment I'm working at the Autry framework and uh, one, one uh, very important part is to, to simulate some kind of incidents in the, in the, in the um, vehicle flow. So, for example, an accident or maybe a slippery road or something. Is there any way to, to model such uh, an incident in your... Yes, um, well, we can, could do this in a deterministic way. You <laughs> could just create an event and say, okay, this car is going to crash. Yeah, but um, you have to, to specialize uh, specify one car who is doing this at the moment. Yes. You cannot say maybe, for example, between second 20 and 30, there is a puddle on the street where yeah. every car comes across this, this um, way, maybe slows down, for example. This is a good point. So we could think about integrating such, which is some sort of property for the street segment, right? Yeah. Yeah. This could be easily done. Yeah. But it's not part of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what's the time? Uh, so I guess, yeah, further questions we can still do in the break. Uh, let's give a big hand to a round of applause for the speaker again.